If you have been using Google Classroom and you want to use Google Classroom within Canvas, that's actually possible using the Google Assignment LTI integration. So it is a Classroom alternative that is run directly through Canvas. So the first thing you're going to do to use it is create an assignment in Canvas and give it a title add in any instructions for your students. In this case, I'm having my students use a template so that I'm going to make a copy for each of them and send that out through this assignment. You need to give your students the number of points that it is worth and a due date. And then for submission type, you're using external tool. Just to note, some of you might have used other external tools such as Pear Deck or Flipgrid or Turnitin, and you might have done a workaround so that you can use rubrics within SpeedGrader. That is not going to work with this particular integration with Google Assignments because there are rubrics built in directly into Google Assignments that you could use. So do not um, add any rubrics or workarounds. What you're going to do is just click on External Tool, click on Find, and then you're going to scroll down and you're going to find that there are three different Google assignments. You are not going to use Google Docs Cloud Assignment. You're not going to use Google Course Kit. The tool that you want to use that is the Google Classroom workaround or alternative, it's called Google Assignments. So you're going to click on Google Assignments and when you do so, it is going to give you a pop up and it's going to confirm that you are using the correct Google account. So you want to make sure that you are choosing your SEQ account. If you do not see your SEQ account showing up here, click switch account and sign into your SEQ account. Um, because I use this Google Chrome window just with my SEQ account, I never sign in and sign out of different Google accounts within this window. The only option or the default option is seq.org. I recommend setting up, if you have multiple Google accounts, set them up as other people and then it will open up in a separate window and then you can keep all of your Google accounts separate and that will save you a lot of headaches with some of um, the different tools that you might be using because then you're only connecting one Google account to one Chrome window. So I'm going to click continue because I have my SEQ account here and it opens a pop up and in this pop up it's where I'm creating my Google assignment and it does have a plagiarism originality checker however it only checks for three assignments. So I would not use it through Google. Our district has turnitin.com, which is also integrated into Canvas. So I would use Google Assignments as a tool for feedback for my students for like their rough draft. Um, and then when they have their final version, their final draft, I would create a separate assignment in Canvas and use the Turnitin external tool. But for today in Google Assignments, if I want to send my students a particular template file, I'm going to click Attach. And it shows you your most recent file. I have been playing around with this this morning, so this document was my most recent file, um, or the one that I'm using as the template. But it creates separate templates just like Google um, Classroom would. So that's why you see some other versions and you see my student answers here, but this is the template that I want to choose. When you are first doing this, it will be the first assignment you see if you've just created your template, but you could always search for your template up top. So I'm going to click add and it's adding this and it's going to make sure that each student gets a copy, their own copy of this doc that they can edit and submit to you. You can actually attach multiple different documents if you'd like, or you don't need to attach any documents at all. Down here at the bottom, it has the total points and due dates. Now I already entered that into Canvas, but you need to make sure that it matches what you have in Canvas here on this document. So I am going to change it to nine points and a due date of tomorrow because that's what I had set up in my Canvas account. Now, if you want to grade this with a rubric, this is where you will do that. You're going to click on the plus and you could either create a rubric here in assignments if you've already created a rubric before, 
you can reuse a rubric or you can import a rubric from Sheets. Now, this morning I created a rubric directly here in Assignments. So today I'm going to choose Reuse Rubric and I'm going to find that rubric that I used earlier today. And I'm going to click on it and I can preview it to make sure it's what I want it to be. When I click preview, I can make any edits if I need to. But I'm going to go ahead and select this. And that's the rubric I'm using. Now, um, when you are creating the rubric, or if I click on the rubric now, I have three dots available. And one of them is export to Sheets. I personally like to create my rubrics in Google Sheets but I want to make sure that I have the particular formatting correct because if your rubric in Sheets doesn't match what assignments will take, it won't work. So once I've created an assignment, I can export this to Sheets and use that as my template for future rubrics that I'm creating. I'm going to go ahead and click on the X to close the rubric. And then now what I can do, everything's set up, I have my document to copy for students, I've changed the due date and the points, I've added a rubric, I'm going to click Create. And it had me, uh, just a second ago, you might have seen it pop up where it said like continue, I didn't need to press anything. If it is slower, maybe you do need to press something. But right now I'm back at this screen that just says Google Assignments, and you're like, wait a minute, I've already been there. Okay. Clicking on this is what popped up and made me create the assignment. So now all I need to do is just keep that highlighted and press select. And you'll notice now that in this box it was once empty. Now it has a URL. This is the URL to my particular assignment that I just created. And so remember I have the due date and the points. And now I'm going to save and publish. As a teacher, when I save and publish, I am going to see my instructions up at the top of the page. Here is where I'm seeing my Google assignment. And right now, no student has turned in any of the work. I am going to go ahead and be a student real quick, and I'm going to submit something so you can see then what it looks like as a teacher. I have created a separate video for students that you could watch if you want to see what's going on at the student end. That will not be shown in this video to keep this video um, shorter. All right, so when I come back to this assignment, after students have submitted their work, I'm going to just open up the assignment, and this window you'll notice has changed. In this window, I can see that a student has submitted their work. Now, um, the name of this student happens to be my name. I'm just using my personal Gmail um, through my fake student account. And so it would have the name of your student. When I click on this, I can open it up and I can view the student's work. And so here, here is my student work. This is what the student did. I can add comments to any of this. I can see their work in the next part, etc. And over here in this right menu, right now I'm in the grading view. So that's what I can see up here. And I attach that rubric. And so I have a place for claim evidence reasoning. So if I click on the arrow, I can actually see all of the criteria. And I can then click on the different things. Or here, if I don't open it, I don't click on the arrow, I can still see like here's the three, two, one, zero. So if you know your rubric really well, you might just click on the particular parts. You can add overall feedback. And when I add overall feedback, the student will see like overall feedback for the entire assignment. Now, you can see that it automatically calculates the grade based on the rubric. And what I need to do now is return this assignment to my student. And um, when the student turned it into me, they have lost all editing access to the Google Doc. It's still in their Google Drive. They can still access it from Canvas, but they can't do anything to it unless they unsubmit it, which they can unsubmit. What I'm going to do now that I've graded it and provided feedback, 
I am going to click return. And when I click return, it will send it back to that one student. You'll notice that there's a drop down here. So I can return just this one submission or multiple submissions. Again, I only have one student right now in my class, so I'm just gonna click on return. And then the student will get their score. Now, students will not see their um, feedback within the Canvas gradebook feedback. So they'll see their points, but they won't see any feedback bubble. They have to click on it on the assignment and go into their submission. So again, if you watch the student video, you'll see how a student will access their feedback. So as a teacher, when I'm in this assignment, I can go to SpeedGrader. And in SpeedGrader, when I click there and look at a student who has turned in the work, um, I can see the grade that I graded already through the integration, but I can go and look at the student work. So if I click on that link, it's going to open up what looks like the Google Classroom. I can click on it and it's going to open it to a new page and I can view that student work. Um, the reason that you wouldn't want to use the speed grader rubric is because you notice that when I did open it, it opens it in a whole separate window and it's easier to grade when the rubric is right there. So that's why we're using the rubric built in and it does go automatically to the gradebook itself. So you can see the grade is here in a speed grader, but if I go to the grade book, you can see over here that the grade from the rubric that I filled out in Google Assignments shows up in the actual grade book for the student. And when the student first turns in the assignment before I grade it through assignments, I will see the icon that looks like this that shows that a student has submitted the assignment. 